Hey everybody, welcome Hello. to uh, episode two of um, Sunday Tea Book. All right, we're getting started. We're just getting the kettle on. Let a few people join and I will, while well, we should, we get the tea brewing, I'll just review for those of you new to Sunday Tea Book, what is gonna happen here in the next few minutes. We are live right now on YouTube and Instagram. Uh, and we're only gonna be on Instagram for the intro because we actually read through a book uh, Sunday Tea Weed is where we read through uh, books, articles, or papers that are originally written in Chinese or maybe have a poor translation, mm -hmm. very hard to access in the West, but contain great tea knowledge. Um, so what we do is we translate these books live here with you, and um, I like to explain this part a little bit because this is really gold. When I first started to get into Chinese tea, I considered myself pretty worldly dude. Like I kind of knew it's a pretty small world. I'm pretty well traveled and I felt like I understood uh, pretty much a lot about different cultures. But there is a lot. The Chinese culture is thousands of years old. There's a lot of stuff that can be very easily misunderstood. So by doing this translation live, it's a chance for you to dive deep into and me to dive deep and learn a lot and Jen even to yeah, learn about our absolutely. culture and how they're different. Mm. Uh, it's a really great chance to learn more than just about tea but about culture and really beyond yeah so uh please chip it so if you're on instagram please jump over to our youtube you'll notice yes. up in the uh in our bio is a link to a youtube video that is not this video but it'll get you to <laughs> no it, it's, it's it, a loop it's a it's a fun one it'll get you there and if you follow the breadcrumb trail to here we'll see you on youtube <laughs> and uh you can join in with us live here today mm -hmm. Um, and once you're on YouTube, and those of you on YouTube, please chip in with your comments and questions. We'll mm -hmm. check them at the end of each section and go over them. Um, try and keep them detailed as possible because yes. we're going to do them at the end of the section. We we'll need to know kind of which part you're referring to and stuff. And there is a little bit of lag because we're reading through. So keep them as detailed as you can. Ask anything. Don't hesitate, okay? Mm -hmm. um, a quick one. I think that's good. Maybe a quick one of the format. What, the way we do it is I'm going to pull the book up onto the screen. I'm going to read through the original English mm -hmm. and then I'm going to explain to you from my perspective what I got out of it and what was maybe chunky and what I think. And then if I, anything was completely lost in translation, Jen's going to jump in and say that somehow this got missed mm. in the English. And that's it. So uh, be sure to subscribe and hit the notify bell so that you'll always know when we're doing this. And uh, on Instagram, hop over to YouTube. We're gonna get the tea brewing and get started in a few seconds. Right. Do -do -do -do. And, and, give me a second, <laughs> YouTube. Share. Cover. I'm still just a little bit stoned. From getting up, had breakfast, and sit down doing this. And go live. Oh, we have some, oh, I'm so glad to see the, the, the uh, live chat is working perfectly. Hi, everybody. Uh, happy Sunday morning or afternoon, I should say. Afternoon, yeah, depending right? on where you all are. <laughs> happy Sunday afternoon, evening, and yes. morning. What are the teas in your cup today? Are you going to sip something as we uh, go through the book? I'm uh, brewing some Baya uh, Qilan. Many of you might have heard it or tried it before it's uh, one of also favorite tea one of my favorite oolongs for sure mm. uh, just a wonderfully roasted warming just great oolong yes yes josh is uh, brewing some 2018 food in gongmei mm. mini mi oh that's nice oh. yeah i really like uh, i really like white tea especially a little bit aged white tea mm. for this kind of summery weather it's really oh, yeah. calm Mm. All right, so uh, I see Igor's here. Hey, welcome Igor and Josh and Joseph and Brandon and JS. Welcome back, guys. All right, so um, while she gets the tea on, I am going to uh, switch over to the uh, book view. And we will get ourselves warmed up to get started here. All right, well, I guess they, they're going to see me mousing. I think that's fine. You guys don't mind watching me mouse a bit. <laughs> so here we go. So this is uh, episode two of China Tea. We're going through the book China Tea by uh, Jen's mom, Jen Li Wu. And uh, oh, thank you. No, oh, this is the don't miss this. If you're going to have some Bai Yatsi Lan, don't yeah. miss the warm leaf. Buttery, creamy. Oh my gosh. You know, it's a roasted oolong, but you don't get a bunch of um, 
overt roasty notes. This is more buttery, buttery. pastry like. Like I call it croissant in a cup. And man, oh, okay. it has the perfect toasty that I yes, like too. Yes, it's literally like a croissant. Oh, so good. So here we are. We're going. I'm going to stop here at the table of contents for a sec. Mm -hmm. So last week we covered China is the hometown of tea, mm -hmm. all the way down to this section here. Mm -hmm. Today we are going to pick up with this section right here. There. Oh, and uh, uh, tea slu sleuth, tea sleuth, Eric, just uh, send me a link about uh, Hemudu culture and the tea discovery there. So I added the link to the episode one if you are curious. Uh, about the origin of tea and those early discoveries what are the peoples who were the first to utilize tea and stuff mm. so you can refer to that section Very and cool. that additional reading would help you like have a better idea because we were pretty brief yeah, that. that's right. So um, I'm going to check that out myself, actually. That's yeah. very interesting. So we covered it a little bit, but they're like almost like cavemen, like just after cavemen, but mm. before, like long before history. So today we're covering the section that's entitled, There Are Good Woods in the South. So mm -hmm. um, a little different than last time. Last time we had lots of sort of poetry and culture. This time you can see soil, climate. Uh, light a little bit more we still uh, have those kind of a weird little things yeah yeah technical tea growing so yeah. let's dive in and I'll get I'm gonna get a sip of tea to lubricate my uh, mouth and then we'll get started with the, the read through it's the, our very first official tea of the day so really dying. official one we had a pot we had a pot we don't count the pot we can't guy one we have Gong Fu is like official tea for us. Mm, for me, official tea is more like uh, doesn't have much eating with it because our breakfast one was mm. with a true, lot with of food. food. True, true, true. All right, so I'll have a sip. Mm. So good. Oh, thank you. So good. All right, guys, let's oh. rock and roll. So refreshing, eh? That was pretty yes. dry. Mm. And it's a relaxing very relaxing all right there are good woods in the south there are good woods in the south because life habits of tea bushes prefer warmer wetter and shadow places so tea bushes have grown in south china since ancient times the growth environment of tea bushes has deeply influenced on the quality has deeply influence on the quality of tea its taste will change if one of the elements such as soil water climate or sunshine changes all the tea leaves which grown in a pleasant climate, enough rainfall, humidity, proper sunshine, have better quality. All right, so I'll consider that a section and stop there. Mm -hmm. Honestly, um, so the title is a little bit interesting. There are good woods in the south. <laughs> I think it just basically There's means, also bad woods in the south. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> think it means it's a good spot for uh, growing tea. And honestly, the translation, although, or the, uh, although that translation is a little bit chunky grammatically, I found it pretty okay. Basically talking mm. about the things that are good for tea, which is soil, water, climate, and sunshine. Mm. Mm. I just want to touch on the top, uh, the, the little subtitle here. Like uh, how weird it is and uh, why that is. Oh, there are good woods in the south here? Yes, it's actually the uh, a direct translation of a quote. The title is in Chinese is Nan Fang Yu Jia Mu. It's the big. Okay, okay, very fancy. This is a. So, what happened is that when we watched the last uh, episode, and I was like, oh, I really wanted, you know to bring people there or even to Chinese because there's a lot of poems or something direct mm. translation so it would be handy to be able to highlight those elements and my technical support guy I, I got a little uh, highlight happy yes <laughs> very happy that he delivers what I asked for good job good job get you some tea <laughs> I need some tea too when you're together long enough just a look tells you you didn't need to highlight that <laughs> so clear, so clear. That was unnecessary highlight. Yes. So, Nan Fang Yu, back to the uh, her book, Nan Fang Yu Jia Mu, the title in proper Chinese was the quote, as the, that quote comes from Lu Yu, and the first sentence of a uh, um, uh, classic of tea, the book that Lu Yu written, starts with the sentence, uh, tea is the good wood in the south. Mm. Mm. So that's kind of a, if you see this title in Chinese, we know it's a 
kind of referring or a secondary quote. Do you call that secondary quote? Uh, like you know, it's a, it it like, knows uh, what you mean. Right. It's not just that you made this up. It's uh, the quote. Yeah, yeah. It me. harkens back to the Lu Yu right, comment. Right. It kind of screams of that. And in, mm. in Chinese, it's not quoted either, right? It's just, yeah. it, but it's just obvious that it becomes it, from almost that. like a saying that is. Right. You will know the origin right. of that was. Yeah. Cool. All right. Let's check the comment a bit. Yeah, sure thing. Okay. So where should we start? We cut cover the hellos, right? Mm, and uh, so Joseph is drinking Guan Yin Hong. Oh, nice, nice black tea, and it's so hot and humid. I just had to have something light. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm, the white, yeah, that's a great choice for staying for beating humidity and heat. Mm, a little bit absolutely. of white tea, a little bit of green tea. Mm -hmm. uh, Cindy's on the same page. Not sure if it's hot and humid <laughs> where you are, Cindy, but she's sipping on some Bai Mudan. Yes, yes. That's my English pronunciation. Bai Mudan. Bai Mudan. Bai, do you no. Bai. Oh, Shampuar, another cooling tea from Brandon. He's starting ripe his first raw. infusion. Oh, sorry, Shupua. Yes. Mm. I'm not used to the ripe raw denoters. I'm mixed up. Still okay. a great, a great choice. We uh, have it every night. Uh -huh. What have we got from JS? Not drinking today, but I'll be bottling a mead that I made recently that has a black tea fermented along with it. What's mead? A mead. A We're gonna have to ask him. I know it's a historic like beverage in the realm of like a beer style process, but very, mm -hmm. very different than beer. Okay. Yeah. What is mead? Yeah, JS. Us, tell us Just, more about yeah. your mead. Super interesting. Yeah. Very cool that you are, uh, and it's very neat that you threw and some black tea along with it. Fermenting along with it. Mm. Yeah, because mm. mead's a fermented beverage. Okay. Okay. I assume that's what he means. He's got the black tea in the fermenting process. Right. And Eric, you made it. We were just talking about you, uh, <laughs> about the humu. Yes, so the, check the, the, the link was really helpful. Thank you for mm. sending that. Uh, in literary words, you might say it's an illusion to Lu Yu. There we go. An that's illusion. The oh, yeah. good yeah. word. I need to take notes. It's a great <laughs> English lesson for me too. Mm -hmm. Especially, I'm an engineer. I don't always have those at the tip of my fingers or tongue, as it were. Not See, that's here why we like Sacramento. to do this. So Cindy says it's not not uh, not not hot, uh, not humid, but hot. Mm. I oh, yesterday was forty C. Oh God! It's like hot. a sauna outdoor. <laughs> yep. It is the first ever alcohol made with a human. Oh, it's Fermented good. honey. Uh, oh right! Oh, that's called meat. Very huh. cool. Very I was cool. looking for that. Remember, because I have been reading that uh, food history book, and uh, they were talking mm. about honey and stuff like that. I was like, "Oh, where can we get some of those?" All right, and I'm going to dive into mm. the next section. All right, soil. Mm. So, um, very good. Soil. Soil is the natural basis of tea bushes growth. The essential nutrients and water are obtained from the soil. Therefore, the Physico-chemical properties of soil have a close relationship with the growth of tea bushes. Tea bushes are generally grown in acid soils of low mountains in which the soil is mainly granite stone. Differentiation of sandy loam, shale, and differentiation of purple soil, etc. Mm -hmm. Lu Yu's Book of Tea has said that the lands there, upper, is rotten stone, middle is gravelly soil, and bottom is the lowest. It means that the more gravelly soil, better permeability, organic matters, and various mineral nutrient substances, all kinds of trace elements which enable the tea grow up strongly and rich in nutritive substances. Woo! All right, so that was pretty technical and also pretty confusing to read for me. Um, Okay. So it's got, there's two paragraphs. So I'll mm -hmm. obviously start with paragraph one. Um, it's talking about stony soil, um, tea like stony soil. Okay, that's pretty clear. Mm -hmm. um, but what, but in the second half of the paragraph, it starts to talk about differentiation of sandy loam, shale, purple soil. Quite confusing. Not sure what's going on here at all. Mm. Um, it's actually very interesting. Okay, okay. The interesting point is you pick up the word uh, sandy soil. Um, I think in the book, it kind of, a, uh, how should I say, it's uh, differentiated, different sandy soil. Because sandy soil, it's... I've right. 
does that have implication? I don't know, but I feel like sandy soil will just tell you what it looks like. It's sandy, but what type of sand is it different? It totally matters, right? Right, right. Some are like a pretty not very nutrition. Some mm -hmm. are uh, mm -hmm. very nutritious. So um, I think we're pretty. So first, the paragraph was understandable. That's really understandable. Is the basic, basic. Let's get you know? into the second one because that's where they expand and where I right. have even more ones. So in the uh, second paragraph, for first we start to talk about what is. So upper is rotten stone, right? It it took me a while to decode that upper means best. So that's not obvious at all, but uh, it turns out that was correct. So the best is quote unquote rotten stone. Mm which is now we're getting into the differences between these sandy soils. What's a good sandy soil? Mm -hmm. What's a not good sandy soil? Okay. So, so really tricky. I so think rotten that, stone. That is very uh, interesting because uh, it's, a, uh, again, a word-to-word -word translation of uh, the quote that comes directly from Lu Yu's the classic ah. of tea. So the Chinese version. Let me get to the Chinese version. Yes, yes. Here, please. So it's here, you, as you can see, it's in the quote. And uh, this is the actual yeah, good use of Yeah, it's talking about, <laughs> yes, talking about the land, right? The uh, translation of upper, middle, and bottom is the Chinese uh, version, which we can use the same word that can mean the spatial wise upper, middle, lower, while you can also mean the best, the mediocre, and the, the worst, worst. Mm. so in the or not origin in the quote it means uh, rot, the rotten s do they see my mouth no okay okay so this is the rotten stone where that come from because of the original uh, word is a uh, rotten stone in Chinese mm. but that uh, just to, to relate to the paragraph above it you don't mind I use your no no not at all tech guy get it kicked out so it relates to this uh, area of the this is what it's talking about oh you do that <laughs> it's hard with the left hand yes it feels like a squeaky mainly granite more. stone right differentiation yeah. this is the quote here yes so the rotten means the 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 falling falling apart like a uh, how the rotten granite but yes. it's not rotten in the more it's weathered actually weather yeah it's weathered and breaking apart breaking down. it's it's the net it's the i did you had know, to do a bit of research on right, this right, this right, is right. pretty technical stuff so this is the geological like so all soil comes from rock that's just right. the way soil goes and when this rock breaks down we they call you guys call it rotten stone but it's like that granite that's starting to break apart it's a certain crumbling, granite crumbling. that become that mm is more than just some surface stones and sand like you know beach little things mm. it has to be those deep granite as mm. here it mentions those acidic soil right. and those uh, uh, granite and the purple soil from those uh, uh, so I asked a friend purples from shale I think shale right? mm. or he said a shelly s-h-e-l-l-y but he said mm. it's a pretty like a, a, a technical geology term mm. that for for people it might be a little bit like a, still don't know what that means right. but it's uh, the difference between the mediocre one which in Chinese is a li rang, which also means a sandy soil so this is a two sandy soil mm. of the different just uh, roughly think of a very like a granite decomposed or like a breakdown right. into sandy soil vis-a-vis -vis the second one more like the beach kind of sandy rocky I think that's low s I'm going to come to that word, oh, yeah? right okay. that one that's not good which is okay. in English they, they use the word I actually initially uh, uh, where is the low s comment oh here we go the bottom the worst is low s at first I had just assumed incorrectly that this was a typo and it meant loose but mm. low s is actually another geological term which is a type of uh, a type of rock it's soil that comes from those non I'm not sure if it's sandstone, but that comes from those non-nutritious mm. stone. It just basically makes sand, which is non-nutritious, like pure, not good for growing. Interestingly, in Chinese, the lower one is directly translated as yellow dirt. 
Mm. One is yellow dirt is like those non-nutritious, like almost silt dust.、Right? Yeah, almost、mm. dust. You pick it up, it was just、uh, like a yeah. Blow by the wind. Yeah, that the grains are very small, yellow, powdery. Yeah, powdery. so you will see a lot of that、mm. kind of a, a soil. Usually, is first it looks really yellow,、mm-hmm. and、uh, it usually in the east, northeast of、uh, sorry, northwest of China, they have that kind、mm. of structure. So they、right. can only grow grow some, you know. Wheat or barley, certain kind of a right that can、thing. tolerate that. Yeah, not very、uh, nutritious for tea. Right. So so let me just check my notes.、Mm-hmm. So basically, what I want to kind of summarize. So yeah, in yeah. terms of soil, what we have this paragraph is basically saying、um, tea likes、uh, number one is the broken down granite soil with those still breaking down. So there's lots of rocks in it. It、mm-hmm. drains well. Um, it, it's. I think the middle was the shelly soil.、Mm-hmm. Uh, shelly. Shelly. No. <laughs> no. The shelly one was the pretty good one too. Pretty good. Okay. Yeah. The middle one is the sandy. But with rocks in it for good、yeah. drainage, right? Yeah.、Like、it's a, a well drained but not very nutritious sandy soil. And the worst is that really fine powdery yellow soil. Because those ones doesn't even drain well. Right.、Mm. Okay. Let's go to the comments and see if anybody had questions about that geology lesson. <laughs> really hacker geology. Hacker, that's right. Okay, so where were we? We gotta find a way to mark the comments. Not humid. There we go. For our mead, there we go. Genius mead is honey wine, alcoholic,、uh-huh. and yeah, very traditional. Maybe for the last one, experimenting. Nice, cool. Very cool to experiment with those beverage making. We did lots of baking on the weekend too.、Mm. Eric's having tea from a mug as he usually does in the morning. Ouch! First time burned my tongue with my in my twenty-seven years of tea. Ayo! <laughs> I'm sorry we had to be here for that. Bummer. Another first. That's、tea. very lucky. I burn my tongue all the time. Right, <laughs> Igor. I'm drinking good Taiwan Yin in my new little Yixing pot. Cool. Very cool. And Ben, where's it go? Ben says hello to everyone. Hello, Ben.、Where's、so no specific questions. I'm going to、mm-hmm. make sure we're scrolled down. So we'll dive into climate, and、mm. so yeah. You want to read it, or yeah, I'm going to give it a quick read.、Mm-hmm. I was just going to say, obviously, based on the length of these sections,、um, mm. people do whole PhDs on things like tea soil. So these are really overview, just good overview. Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. So climate: the requirement of tea growth are moist climate, enough rainfall, and more clouds, and more fog, and little sunshine. Temperature.、Hey. Sorry. <laughs> Social media oversteep. Temperature determines the T enzymes, which in turn affects the converse, the conversion, and the accumulation of T nutrients. Under different temperature conditions of raw materials, the quality of their T is not the same as the content of nutrients. In addition, when T bushes in a condition of sufficient water, the formation of carbohydrates photosynthesis would be difficult. To condensation, the formation of cellulose is not easy. As a result. That the fresh tea ingredients could remain fresh for a long period without being rough or old. Meanwhile, the abundant rainfall would promote tea in the nitrogen metabolism, so that make the nitrogen content and amino acids in the fresh leaves increased. All the above are beneficial to improve the taste of tea. Okay, so <laughs> I think the English kind of a. The way of connecting words make that complicated. Makes it, it makes it really hard to understand.、Really、yeah. Foggy. So again,、uh, para one though, all in all, not bad.、Mm-hmm. Very short paragraph.、Mm-hmm. Basically, seems to be saying that we want、uh, wet. We want、mm-hmm. a wet climate、mm-hmm. with not too much sun. Pretty much that's it.、Um, nice、yeah. misty and foggy, which is a kind of wet.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just a typical southern China kind of a yeah weather. South China weather.、Mm. So part two though、uh, starts out okay.、Uh, seems to draw a relationship between temperature means、yes. good T enzymes,、yeah. which means good nutrient conversion.、Yes. But then there's a section when other conditions are similar and temperature. So it seems to be saying, I, but I can't be sure because it's really chunky. When、uh, if we make everything stable and、mm-hmm. change when conditions are similar and temperature is varied. Um, the raw tea quality is going to be affected. 
the, the, the raw material, the quality of the leaf will be affected by this. That's what it seems to say. Mm. Miss anything? Did we catch that? I don't think so. Okay, so not bad then. And then para three, um, again, I think it was okay, but I'm not sure. Again, I can, the trouble is, is as I read it, I can never be sure if I'm interpreting it properly. Because like you said, the connecting, the way the sentences are connected is really, I'm, I'm having to do kind of so much um, guessing. I'm now not sure if I don't know, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm guessing right. Mm. So um, the third paragraph, sufficient water, uh, it seems like it says that a good amount of water makes it hard for the leaf to form cellulose, mm -hmm. which is what makes tea leaves uh, hard to process. Mm -hmm. Now, this was, I'm using some of my existing tea knowledge to get there because yeah, like this Yeah, cellulose is making that more strange. Stiff. Stiff oh. and uh, thicker, yeah. Mm -hmm. But if I'm a beginner, I think I might have had a lot of difficulty coming to that conclusion because we've been in the field mm -hmm. and we've seen the low, the low leaves on the bush and we've seen them come out when they go through finishing, they're, they're not resilient. They just go back to their original shape. They don't look mm -hmm. good. They don't taste good. So I was leaning on some knowledge there. It wasn't overly clear. Um, mm -hmm. This is uh, not a comparing between the same tea plant. It's talking about in general situation, if there are lack of uh, mm. uh, water, they become really uh, oh, uh, right. like a, probably you don't say that, oh, it's, uh, you know, a more... Tough. They tough. become tough. Yes. Mm. The fiber become tough, which actually, if you grow veggie like us, you mm. would probably notice some veggies who love water, so when it's less water, it grows slow and it also become really tough, not pleasant to eat. So right. It's the same phenomenon. Right, right. I'm trying to think of a good veggie that would demonstrate that, like celery, right? If you have a tender, fresh celery, it's going to be much more pleasant to eat. It's not going to end up making dental floss in your mouth mm. when you try to chew it. Um, what else do I have? So with enough water and raw material, yes. Oh, and then there's something about the nitrogen as well. Um, so it's, again, it's not... Uh, I didn't find it overly clear, but it seems to be indicating that abundant water gives good nitrogen metabolism. That leads to amino acids, which I don't, I think I had to, I don't think it actually said anything about amino acids. Oh yes, it does. So yeah. nitrogen and then leads to amino acid and that leads to good finished tea, which we kind of, as tea yeah. lovers, you kind of get into tea, you start to learn that those are sort of your really juicy mm -hmm. uh, some very good flavors coming from amino acids, especially in your green teas. Yes, yes. Definitely water is talk about metabolism and uh, the plant's usage of uh, nitrogen with mm. sufficient water, it's better utilizing nitrogen. Right. Yeah. I think uh, to just summarize this part, it has uh, some uh, uh, chemical reaction uh, talk there. It's not uh, if just look at the Chinese side, it's not very like overly professional. It does mention some mm. of those uh, terms because uh, explaining things you ha kind of have to do it. Right. But I think the the English or Chinese translation, the, the the grammar or the how the words are forming make that more mm. confusing than the actual scholar part. But right. you got the gist of it. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. So yeah, it was a it was a bit of a tricky passage, but it was it, it got through. Oh. Let's go over and see if any questions came in. Mm -hmm. I'm drinking good day one in. Ben and then Eric says interesting. I put uh, hung to in my Huang to in my Pleco. Pleco app. Pleco it's a app. translation app. Lowest Yellow sandy soil, typical there in North China, yep. Northwest China, not uh, pretty North. If you say North China, I think of uh, the carving, the, the and, stuff carving like and stuff. Mm. They have really rich black soil. Oh, yeah, interesting. Great for rice and everything. It's yeah. almost it's like uh, West. Yeah, almost yeah. like uh, Arizona soil. You know, I'm guessing. Uh, it, a little bit. You know that really sandy, loosey. Because that you can uh, Google it, you will see that really. Xinjiang, right? Uh, not quite the Xinjiang, no. Shanxi, Shanxi, Shanxi. Shanxi province is pretty typical. Like you, if you Google those messages, and uh, it's really barren, really yellow, mm. kind of thing. Oh, I'm so glad we choose this tea. Mm. Me too, I love it.
Bayat Silan is my fave oolong. Red is so sweet. Non rock tea and oolong. I gotta okay, be careful. Non rock tea. I don't want to get called out for having. I do have multiple favorites. I guess it's okay. You call me out. I don't care. I have multiple <laughs> favorites. They're I like, just love the creamy and the uh, the floral of it and the lingering mm -hmm. power in the mouth. It's just uh, like when I'm not. Sipping it, just uh, going through the content, I still have that very mm. pleasant yeah. lingering there. Yeah, the creamy buttery for me is uh, the killer app. I cannot get enough of that. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go into the uh, next section. Mm -hmm. Good teas are produced in high mountains. Mm -hmm. Throughout history till today, no matter the tradition, no matter the traditional tribute tea or the new creative contemporary tea, high quality tea are mostly from the high mountains. There are many famous tea named by the mountains, clouds, and mist, such as Jiangxi Lushan Mountain Clouds and Mist, Hunan Nanyu Mountain Clouds and Mist, etc. Mountain tea is green, more hair long internode fresh tea produced by this has a special flavor and aroma it also has heavy fragrance and strong taste resistance to brew and the cable stout and tight pico revealed cable right pico revealed very poetic oppositely the ground tea shoots the ground tea shoots short the bottom is hard but thin the <clears throat> leaves are flat and yellow lack of light green Tea produced by this has lighter fragrance and taste and in a skimmy and thin shape. Of course, the flat garden, if we can create the ecological environment suitable for tea growing, it will be possible to produce high quality tea. Whew, okay, another one that was a bit, a bit bumpy. The second paragraph here. is really like... Yeah, the second I paragraph I have a lot of question mark I don't know about. What that. Um, Maybe let's start with the first paragraph. I yeah. think it's pretty guessable. Yeah, I, again, I think I guessed it. It's okay. You know, mountain tea is good, both uh, throughout history all the way into our modern innovations with tea. Mountain tea still prevails uh, to deliver mm. high quality tea. It is the one. Um, and lots of famous tea names are named after that mm. very phenomenal mountains with mist so beautiful right when we're there and we see those you wake up in the morning especially very often the mountain is covered with mist and yes, it, yes. you will almost hear the little asian music play with the gujan and the flute <laughs> right okay maybe it's just stereotype <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a very nice stereotype though mm -hmm. however para two gets into a little bit more it's a little bit more mm, it's a lot more before, guesswork just before we jump mm. into paragraph two i just want to mention uh, the last bit of the paragraph one is the t name which so mm. uh that says uh, there uh, the, can you do yeah yeah sure in the, the english those? version of the yeah, t name it says jiangxi lushan mountain cloud and mist <clears throat> sorry it's a translation so it's a jiangxi province this uh, this tea is from Jiangxi province called uh, Lushan Yun Wu, Yun Clouds Wu Mist. That's a direct translation there. And uh, Hunan province has the tea called uh, Nan Yue Yun Wu, Nan Yue. <laughs> so they put uh, Nan Yue Mountain Clouds and Mist. So Nan Yue means mountain. So right. South Mountain Cloud and Mist, fully translated. But Nan Yue Yun Wu is the name. Right, right. That. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they kind of this is sort of comes to how we name tea with, with it struggles. It's a struggle for people because we only use the uh, the direct pinyin name, mm. right? But the reason we do it is we don't want to end up with something that's half translated or double translated or mm. just is it the same? Is it different? Just just we just stick with the straight name for that reason. Right. So good. I was wondering about that. I couldn't. Right, right. I'm not actually familiar with those particular teas, so I wasn't sure how they butchered the name is that too harsh mm. uh it's just um, <laughs> could be quite um like uh, if you know it's a name you can guess uh, mm. oh that's a name and you see how they capitalize that why is the mist not capitalized right. like cloud is capitalized the mountain is capitalized like if it's a name shouldn't that be all right. capitalized like yes. or not like uh, it's just a messy when yeah, it comes to name right, right. 
All right, so in para two, we get into uh, exactly why these teas are better quality when they're grown a mountain, right? So mm. it's um, greener. So what does it say? It's, it's mountain tea is green, more hair. Okay, so that's tea fuzz, uh, trichome. Right? I'm, yes. I'm pretty sure they buy more hair, they mean more trichome. Yes. Um, this was a bit tricky. Internode, long internode, I was really guessing to mean more space between the leaves where the leaves sprout out. So mm. more longer stem mm. um, um, and fresher. Mm. Um, so, and then it goes on to say that because of this, the tea will have. Uh, so it also maybe let's work on this uh, yeah i agree agree uh, like a sentence by sentence right sure, it's, it's a fresh it. or first uh i think most of that you guess that fresh the fresh is i think it's a misleading word because fresh is mm. like a stale or fresh or something yes, very right much, yeah but it actually means uh the leaves the tenderness the 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 it still means the physical physical size elements. property of the leaf yeah property of the leaf it's so not tender a, might have been a better word i think in this so case. yeah mm. yeah and again this whole paragraph it's uh, confusing even for the translation is so you know so freaking weird mm. it's because uh th this tells that the translator is not a very is not uh, a tea person because mm. uh, when you're not a tea person you read it as like uh, I seem to guess something, but I don't understand. This whole paragraph is a way of describing tea leaves and its uh, stuff is uh, Chinese tea terms. Yeah, like, well, uh, those let's are dive into that just okay. for a minute for the folks, because this is something very interesting, which is when you're reading a tea book as a, if a Chinese tea person, you know this, mm. these words mean that. We've it's almost like a Kilgrim. Mm. To tea people, we know all oh, Kilgrim. Mm. So other people is like, what? That kind of thing. So those are yeah. descriptions of uh, describing right. the leaves, uh, the aromas, and the, the looks is those is that kind of a tea term. Yeah, yeah, like shu as well, right? Like uh, the mistranslation of shu puar, which mm. sometimes even non tea people is that right? Non even non native Chinese speaker who are non tea people might and that leap mm. into the English right. call that cooked puar. Right. Not right. correct. That's uh, ripe puar. Right. Yes. So that's another, so why do I want to focus on that? Because it's not even just us who are out in the dark as foreigners, even the tea terms can be quite um, tricky. So mm -hmm. I thought it was worth diving into a bit. Yes. So the second part, um, yeah, we were doing sentence by sentence. So the next part is the um, heavy so, fragrance, strong taste, resistance to brew. So a little bit tricky the again. Brew, oh, where is it? Um, second mm -hmm. sentence there, right after the. Uh, oh, it has a heavy fragrance. Yes, yes. Oh, tea produced by this has a special flavor and aroma. Also has heavy fragrance, strong taste, resistance to brew. Again, a little bit able to guess. I think it's more fragrant. It tastes better, mm -hmm. um, more aromatic. Resistance mm -hmm. to brew. Probably, I think that means it's going to give you more infusions. Yes. Because it's more replete with uh, good stuff, nutrients, yes. and, uh, amino acids, and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. Heavy fragrance is in interesting because you because it's weird, so you might guess it's a strong. Yes. Fragrance is not necessarily true. Mm. Uh, in Chinese, we call Very that good. gao xiang, high, gao xiang. Tall, high tall aroma. Mm. Will you be able to guess? Like it's really hard. It's the. F it, oh, it's, it's the type of aroma. Yeah, it's how this aroma demonstrates itself. Right, right. It's not a, a thick, heavy, sweet aroma. It's those high floral more like that we talk about. Yeah, it's a. It's almost. A, I often compare that to like how we talk about the people, right? Some people has that elegant air. Some people has that sexy air or stuff. Or That's clumsy. <laughs> Yeah, it's that kind of description of the aroma. It's not about what aroma it is. Right. It's how this aroma presents the itself. Mani how it manifests. Manifest. Mm. Yes. Very good. Right. Okay. And the strong taste, again, it's not about strong. It's not bold. It doesn't mean bold right. or boomy. Right. It may be rich. Could it be a better word, I was thinking? Mm. Mm. You know, I think rich might be better than strong because 
uh, strong seem to give people the impression that it's very absolutely bold, bold, bold pungent, punch you in the face. Yes, yes, really which obvious. is not what I think. What we're the, the overall word, if you had to pick one, would be mm. complex, complex, complex right. aroma, complex flavor. Right. right, there's a lot going on. Yeah, and that's consistent with the nutrient content of High Mountain. Right, mm. lots of fun. Um, yeah. freaky stuff in the tea and yeah, freaky, freaky I mean, stuff. fun fun yeah. good good freaky stuff natural yeah and you totally guessed about the resistance to brew mm. more more infusions right yes. we really see that like you really do see that with high quality tea the number of infusions you get we've seen people react to our tea like how many mm -hmm. okay so what else third paragraph Okay, so the third. I, no, wait. We're seconds by no, seconds. No, we're not done yet. No, yeah, yeah you're, right, you're right. Here comes the scary part, which is the cable, the cable stout and tight. Right. I just, I completely Oof. just, I said I don't know what that means. Cable stout and tight. Pico revealed. No idea. Anybody want to guess? Because this is the really, really typical tea description turns, very... Uh, so this is a typical Chinese... Chinese tea description turns that you have to be pretty familiar with the, really the tea thing. Right. And that's why she, I think she also had problem translating it. Mm. It's uh, like, uh, don't really know what that means, even a word by, like, mm. character by character, you understand. So uh, we should be clear that your mom didn't translate this, right? She's no, not. A, she's not. No. A, she doesn't speak she doesn't English. Speak English. So uh, I just thought people might wonder since your mom wrote it, did she? Right, no, right. she wasn't the translator, yeah. but she hired one, but not a tea. The, the a publisher tea. hired. Publisher hired, yeah. who is a non-tea person. We think we don't. Right? It's just uh, based on how the. <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, where was that? Uh, tight. Oh, oh. Uh, cable stout and tight. Mm. I'm really curious about this because the I Chinese tiao su fei shu. I remember when I first got into tea, I was like, "What?" Shall I show them that in the characters? Are they mm, important? Not very important, okay. but the so the what they mean by cable stout and tight. It means the the look of the dry leaves. Mm. They're sturdy, and the the shape of that is pretty tight. Mm. Uh, how should I say this is uh, in comparison with uh, say Huang Pian, mm. the yellow leaf which is the lower part of the plant oh, use oh. usually was sift out and not in the final product right. those ones are hard and uh, it doesn't uh, form the shape as you as I we wish right. so they will be still open or something like that so the older basically the older the leaves is like the more mature the leaf is, the harder to make that into the shape. Right. That's why you want it to be all uniformed and into that tightly shape. It kind of in indicates a little bit of the uh, the tenderness of the leaves. Right, right. And it, it's a big quality indicator, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And pico. Pico. Not pico. Not pico. Pico. <laughs> pico. Uh, I don't know what it means, but you heard of an uh, orange pickle, so pickle. <gasps> Maybe bud? Let us know. Somebody, know. Yeah, somebody yeah. out there for sure knows what they pico means. We don't drink enough orange pico to know. Right. So what this sentence, uh, this uh, phrase, bai hao xian ru, means the wide fuzz. Sorry, again? Bai? Bai hao. Right. Bai hao yin zhen, right? Bai hao xian ru means the shows. Mm. So it means that a trichrome, ah. the, the, the tea fuzz shows. That means it's a buzz, right? Again, on the finished tea, though. On the finished tea. Ah. Yes. Okay, so there's a lot implied there, right? Mm. Uh, okay, very good. So it means that the fuzz is not only... We already covered that there's lots of fuzz in the mountain tea, mm -hmm. but not only is there lots of it, it's pretty tough. It can make it... like Obviously, mm -hmm. the process, the producer has to be good, too, but yes. it can make Yes, and the process matters. So you yeah. cannot mm -hmm. ask, like, a, a, you know... A uh, like a, a Black tea does have that, mm -hmm. right? So uh, oolong... Because of the plucking mm. and stuff, you won't see it. Right. But right. it's just uh, talking about the mountain itself. Would have the mount high mountain tea would have that. And the next uh, it dives into the plenty, right. which is almost the opposite mm -hmm. of the uh, mountain tea. Mm -hmm. You know, talk about the shoes, sh shorter shoes, shoes, and bottom. The bottom. It doesn't mean the bottom. Where is it? Can you show them the yeah, bottom? Yeah. The bottom, <laughs> that's a chi uh, it's a the tea The bottom term. is hard and thin. It's a yedi. We call that yedi. It's the leaf. 
It's not the bottom, the brood leaf, which means the fresh material, the leaf is a thing, you know,、oh. not in, enough nutrition. Uh, like when、thing. you pick it up and feel it, it would、yeah. be like maybe mushy and come apart. It's not not necessarily mushy. Okay, it's but just thin. a thinner. You can you can feel that.、Mm-hmm. It's a, like a, talking about the thread count of、uh, the body. Yes. Right. You you can eventually feel that with enough experience. Oh, hang on, we got an error. Help, guys! Can you still? Oh, not enough video to maintain smooth transmission, as such viewers will experience buffering. Okay, hopefully that will be okay. A little bit of buffering. Okay. Not sure why. Not retaining enough video. Maybe we're not moving enough. I don't know. Let's carry on. Okay, we'll Th- carry on. And you guys,、dead. if you can see this, let us know if everything is fine on your side. We did get some notice about arrows. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm. Right. So we were talking about、um, mm. plains tea, bottom hard but thin. So basically, it means the material is just not as.、Uh, Literally,、uh, if you feel it, oh, I was going to encourage people. You know, when you're done with your tea, definitely play with the leaf.、Mm. Reach out. That's what we're we're talking、yes. about here, right? Is that feeling of the leaf between your fingers? Is it is it thick and luscious, or is it thin and a little bit papery or something? Yes. And then after that, it's talking about leaves are flat and yellow. That relates to no, no buffering, buffering problem. problem. Yeah, looks like everything's so, okay. It's just a, probably a warning. Yeah. So、uh, then you talk about leaves are flat and yellow. That's what we just、uh, talked about the the Huangpian kind、mm. of situation because it's、Resistant、older leaves. Resistant to、uh, processing. Yes.、Mm. So the the leaf is more mature, so they're harder, more、uh, fibers and stuff. And、uh, the process when it's a lighter fragrance、mm-hmm. means weaker fragrance, and the taste in a skinny and a thin shape. <laughs> So it tells skimmy. Really, I don't even know if that's quite a word. Like, right. Like just the top kind of as well. Okay. So in again Chinese tea term, lighter in taste means a thinner in taste. It's、mm. mostly more about mouthfeel,、mm. which is you know not just、uh, I brew that strong or light. Uh, 调索细瘦 is what is up. The look of the dry leaf is、uh, skinny. So means the tea、mm. plant itself、uh, is very thin,、right. and sheng gu jiao qing means it's lighter. It's kind of linked because it's skinny and it's weak. Just to think about it, not sick kids, but you know what I mean. Like、uh, people、we、from talk, the same age. Sometimes we talk about how you you can look at dry leaf and you see it's pretty lustrous and.、Um, Just has a rich look, like the color.、Mm-hmm. It's it's not just the color; it's the combination of the color and the texture and, and that sort of amorphous appearance, like all、mm. the things combined. Whereas you, if you see that by itself, it's thin,、yeah. it's dull a little bit.、Mm. We've seen tea like that. I like to compare that, like people. You know, you have、mm. a, maybe obese people doesn't look as healthy, right?、Mm. Bloated、mm. maybe, and you have、right. really sturdy, strong people, and you have really skinny and a, a little bit、right. sick, like. Right, because that's what we are more familiar with. Right, right. Rather than tea leaves, but we can also examine tea leaves like、right. how we look、right. at that, especially side by side. Yeah, it's the multi-dimensional thing that yeah, makes up the appearance. Yeah, and the lustrous and、right. the stuff also come through. Okay, good, good. Okay. okay, that's para two. Okay, and the most important, I think, is the whole thing that rubs everything up and、uh, set up the whole tone, which is. If the environment is right, it's not like、uh, high mountain tea is the good tea. Uh, ground uh,、yes. flat tea is the bad. Tea. It's like almost like everything we、yes. see is not just one thing that settles everything. Right. Right. It's just one element. Oh,、mm. speaking of which, I wanna. I don't know if you guys are noticed that like、uh, earlier on when we talk about、um, uh, soil, which that touches. On the first paragraph of the soil,、mm-hmm. do you mind? No, not at all. <clears throat> Technic support needs direct、uh, ask. So on the fa-、uh, first、uh, paragraph of there, it mentions that the、uh, tea bushes often、uh, grow on low mountains. Right here, right. While we were talking about high mountains, so. Are they contradictory、oh, to each other? Like,、right. what does that mean? If you capture that, that's very good. And I think、uh, one thing people are having、uh, 
uh, a little bit uh, of the uh, not quite a misunderstanding, but uh, um, how should I say? Okay, I think that's important because one day we had a conversation. I forgot who, but we we're talking about uh, uh, so what's the altitude of this tea house? Like this right. is about four hundred meters high and. And his reaction was a little bit like, also oh, this is not a very high mountain tea. Right, right. Uh, that is a, a little misunderstanding of a high mountain tea. Mm. Tea plant has its uh, limits of right. how high it can grow. And teas don't like to grow. No, good teas never really grow on the top of the mountain. It's not uh, the higher the better. There's right, the right. I, ideal situation, which is in the middle-ish of right. the mountain so the first one talking about low mountain what it refers to is in the mid lower region of the mm. mountain not the top of the mountain right. the sweet spot the sweet spot mm. while the other one when we talk about they like to grow in high mountain is in comparison vis-a-vis -vis the plant of right. zero like or 20 yes. alti 20 meter altitude that kind of a comparison a lot of teas in grows on four like four hundred meters, yeah. six, seven hundred meters or stuff. Yeah. Taiwanese Wulong, you, you guys probably know, they even put the name High Mountain Wulong. It's mm -hmm. because they had a special process uh, like experimenting and uh, training to get the tea grower to like 1200. That's mm -hmm. exceptional high for tea right. to grow and it's a special cultivars and stuff like that. Right. But usually tea don't like that. Yeah. And Yunnan yeah. is different because it comes with altitude so, and the climate is different. Right. So what I'm trying to say, am I blah, 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 blah. No, it's very good. <laughs> this is a really important topic and why it didn't jump out at me because when I read uh, um, what did it say? Low mountain. Mm -hmm. I assume the way it was written, it sounded like that's relative to the whole mountain, all of oh, the mountains yes. in the world, which of okay. course, you know, all the trees have a spot where they can no longer survive on yes. every mountain. That's called yeah. the tree line. So T's tree line. So I assume it just meant that, but it's actually right. a little bit more interesting. I'm right. glad we called it out. Mm. And a lot of times there's some you know, some teas from the top of the mountain, they don't taste really good. They're really bitter. You have to work mm. hard to get rid of that in the process, right? So that's right. Also and then shows. in the marketing, you throw high mountain on it so that it sells out quicker, right? So, so just to know, I think the important thing is plain tea doesn't equal bad tea and high mountain tea doesn't equal good tea. Mm -hmm. um, and how high the, it's not the bigger the number, the better the tea. Exactly. So it's just pretty complicated. Yeah, like is everything plays a part. Cultivar, geography, right? So yeah. what's a high mountain in the north versus a like high mountain in the south? Climate and soil we just talked everything, about. Everything, right? Yeah. Okay. Very good stuff. Have a sip of tea. I feel like I talked a lot. Right. And so so that brings us to the last paragraph. So in English, it sounds like that. It, it sounds very sort of one direction. So it says on the, the flat garden, if we do the right things, so we can make high quality tea. But it doesn't call out so much to the opposite, which is... And you often see the pictures of that too, the high mount, the rolling mountains and right to the very top, mm. not a single tree, only tea field, mm. all the way rolling right over to the top of the mountain. So that's the yeah. opposite effect, right? Yeah. It's you. That's direct sound. That's counter that's right. of uh, what it says earlier too. Yeah. It's, uh, so, the sound um, doesn't like, they like, oh, coming up. Sorry. Coming up. <laughs> coming right, up. Right. So that. <laughs> okay. So here is some let's uh, do the comments. Yeah. Comments here. So skinny as a skinny supposed to mean skinny. I think so. I yeah, think I think so. so. It means the shape is skinny. Yeah. And Josh says uh, also I wonder if skinny is a kind of a simplified translation of oh yo emaciated. Yeah, emaciated. What? Emaciated means uh like how you said skinny and sick like not just skinny. Mm. Um, I really like your word. Uh, keep throwing this. It's really helpful mm. for us to uh, you know describe that more accurately and for my English vocabulary. Yeah. Oh, the other day I learned a really fancy word. Uh oh. Oh. Um, uh, paracure? No, no. Uh, I. What was that? Um, it described the aroma. Petra something. Petrichor. 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 The aroma after the rain, mm. the soil aroma, the the dry, dry. Dry soil, soil. right after it rains and gives yeah. off that smell. Apparently, that's petrichor. We both kind of fell in love with that word. So. Yeah. If you're into words of the day, that's a pretty fun one. And pretty handy for tea. Some tea has that. Mm, mm. Let me see if there's any other. Skinny, skinny. Josh checked on Google. So this one is really interesting. Pico is a bastardization of the Chinese dialect Pek Ho, or white down. Oh, fuzz. Mm. Mm. 
I'm uh, guessing it's a dialect version of Baihao. I think, yeah. Very cool, very cool. Thank you for Googling that for us live. Good. I'm going to get ready to dive into the light section. Right. Okay, so here we go, light. Oh. Did you catch something? No, I was just thinking about the dialogue. But if you detach that and not to think of that as English, it does sound like dialogue. It's probably early times when they were importing that black tea and stuff, and because it's like a southern dialect sense, like a Fujian Guangdongish. Yes, yes. Anyway, cool. Next one to the light. All right, light. Although it is necessary for tea to take photosynthesis, produce organic substances with light, the weak light is better, especially diffuse light. Tea grows up in the diffuse light and give an influence on the biochemical changes of organism, particularly in nitrogen compounds, which benefit the improvement of the quality of, of tea. Tea garden, which faces to the sun and has been shadowed by the trees, can give out tea leaves in better quali quality. Lu Yu's Book of Tea believes that tea should grow in the mountains, which faces to the sun and has been shadowed by the trees, can't be pitched pitched up or it will cause illness okay wow again para one not bad para two a little bit a little bit tough um so yeah para one seems to just be pretty okay right t needs light but we mm -hmm. prefer diffuse light mm -hmm. nitrogen i think the reason we love to mention nitrogen is because it's related to amino acid mm -hmm. which is an important uh uh content in terms of the quality of tea mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh and you know one of the the feature of Anji Bai Cha is it's exceptionally high in that. So right. the cultivars, other stuff all play a part in terms of the right. content. Right. Right. Mm. And diffuse light, yes, that's why we were saying that uh, yeah. if uh, the tea grow on the top of the mountain, that's straight light without mm -hmm. no shades, no shelter and stuff. It's just too much. Right. They like diffuse light. Yeah, or those tea gardens that are just 100% beautiful linear rows of tea and not mm. a single other tree in sight. Mm. A little bit tricky because right. they prefer to have a couple of, a canopy, a little a kind of spotted canopy overhead to give the right. little diffusion of the light. Yes. That reminds me of Yunnan when we were in, like, that's a little bit of a different situation, but that's literally a jungle and the tea just grows in the jungle. So many of the trees are, or most of the trees are much taller than tea. Mm. So the light is always filtering through the, the jungle canopy, just gorgeous. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so second paragraph, I think gets a really, uh, really tricky. Um, and I, I have a feeling, I wrote in my notes, is this a poem? Because yes. uh, it starts <laughs> to get so... <laughs> so hard to understand. I'm thinking, and it mentions Lu Yu's book, so I'm like, this is probably a. Poem Whenever thing. there's a poem or yeah, direct it quote, gets, it becomes really, uh, really weird translation. Yeah, very hard. Yeah. Mm. So I think since the English doesn't make much sense, I can just uh, translate that uh, and look maybe at the look poem. at the Chinese version. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is what uh, Lu Yu thinks in terms of uh, what the light is. First. The bottom one here, right? Yeah, and here one. Oh, here we go. Yes. The four character, yang, ya, yin, ling, that describe the environment, the local -ish, the environment that uh, tea likes. Yang, ya, yang, yin, yang, right? You can see oh, okay. yin, yang there. The one, the first and the third character. First is uh, yang, third is yin. So yang, ya means the uh, sunny side of the mountain. Think about a mountain in China because it's a North Pole. It's, it's on Northern North, Hemisphere. The, the North, sorry, North. You guys got Santa Claus? <laughs> they, they don't have Santa Claus. Canada has no. Santa Claus. Okay, we know that. Everybody knows. North that. Hemisphere. So the South is sometimes you can say it's the South of the mountain. That also means the mm. sunny side. Mm. It's the South. It's a face. It basically, direct side. Direct mm -hmm. sun, while mm -hmm. the other side is more shaded, mm -hmm. right? So, tea is like that spot, and that spot creates a good tea. While yin ling, yin, you can imagine the opposite of sunny forest, in forest. What means, uh, what it really means is it's uh, sheltered by the forest. 
So it's mm. uh, it has sufficient like proper sun, uh, proper sunlight. No sunlight in a proper way. Sufficient sunlight in the proper way, not direct shooting. So mm. it needs a forest to provide the shade. Very like, cool. So that's the situation. Then and Louis also point out this is the negative side of the tea. Tea also, you know, it's a plant. It grows where it grows. So on the ne yin shan, not negative. Sorry. Here. Yeah. Yin shan. Yin shan means the other side of the mountain, which okay. is in the more shaded area of the mountain. And he mentioned after that he said bu kan cai zuo means uh. Bu. I recognize bu. Bu. Yeah. It means uh, you shouldn't. Pluck it, don't pluck it, because you know the what we think is when it um, doesn't have enough sun to get the airflow and stuff, it's pretty stale, stale air there in the negative side and negative energy more right, concentrated right. there because of lack of a sufficient sun. So they think the property of the tea is more stale. It、uh, has that kind of a property.、Right. So if、uh, you drink that, the result is jie.、Uh, Jiaji means it become that kind of a disease that also have that stale property like a、uh, uh, like a、um, tumor in the belly or like a belly、okay. ache or、uh, the origin meaning of that word is like females like a uterus have those little cramp oh polyps、uh, yeah like those、oh, yeah. kind of things. Wow.、Uh, so basically, all he is saying is,、uh, it's not a good to eat teas、uh, from the more the north side north side of the mountain. Wow. This is really interesting because it relates to、uh, like I love diving into the poem because this is where lots of、uh, culture pops out. And、um, what did I want to say about this? Is the、um, it's interesting because so Lu Yu. Is coming up with this、uh, sunny side is better,、um, you know, and this north side isn't as better, and they have metaphors to explain why and what the effect is. This is so interesting. So we come across this a lot, just in eating and things too, and how、uh, or with uh, uh, getting better from a cold and things.、Mm. So he didn't know about nitrogen metabolism and、yeah. photosynthesis and all this jazz. So he had his way, his model to explain that, which worked for people to understand. Why is the sun side better? Why is the other side better? Now we now、like、we could say, oh, well, that was so. It doesn't like. It, well, that's because of nitrogen. He was wrong. That's kind of a tendency when we when he doesn't have the exact science. I think it's like the old times. The、mm. the farmers that they know to do this、mm -hmm. for the plant, where the plant needs to say,、uh, you know, you burn those、uh, ashes from the plant and、uh, you put that in the soil. Right, it's right. good. They don't have to know exactly what is that、that's、and、right. what is, but it works. Yeah, right. They've done it over trial and error over、yes. years and generations、yes. and shared knowledge.、Yes. They come to this understanding.、Right. This they is, know.、Mm. This year I grow this, but I need to take a break. I grow the pea instead, or something to. Right, right. Those are comes from the daily practice that. And yearly and yes, generations. Yes. Even though it's、practice. not scientifically、yes. understand it why, but it works. So. Yeah. 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 So I just thought it's interesting to point out because there's that that I think that theme will come up again、mm -hmm. and again because we're dealing with an ancient culture here, the Chinese. And but they're they're not just trying stuff and claiming it works. They're trying stuff and when it doesn't work, they change that. Try something else. Try something else. And over you know hundreds of years, they come up with some pretty complicated stuff, which is almost unbelievable, right?、Mm. Porcelain. There's tons of examples of this, right? That you can't believe it was made before we had machines and science. So I think that's a good little、uh, foundational thing to keep in mind as we go through the book.、Mm. Okay. And、uh, let me check. Did I miss any of my notes? Da 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 da. Good buds, planes, opposite, red conditions. No, I think that's about it. Yeah.、Uh, okay. Let me go back to our full screen of us, everybody. I know you want to see more of us. Here we are. <laughs> All right. So、um, I think that wraps us up for this week's tea read.、Um, another section. We're super excited to bring these to you. Please. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're new to the channel uh, uh, and you're just watching this on the replay order, I think everybody here we know you all because you're all regular. So thank you guys first. I guess thank you guys for joining. Yes, and yes, and thank you for、questions. helping us with those. Did we answer any questions that we missed? I think we should just double check that. Okay. Yeah, I don't think so. 
Also, if all. you scroll up the comments, I looked yes. a couple of things up. Yeah, we, we definitely will. We'll, yeah, we'll go through those and have a check. Uh, good. So anyway, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so anyway, thank you guys for joining. If you're new to the channel, please click on the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you won't miss uh, when we go live with our next session or when we post a, a video about tea, tea culture, brewing instructions, any mm -hmm. of that jazz. And if you think we're sharing some uh, useful and uh, helpful content and you like it, be sure to like the video and possibly share with mm. your tea friends. So that really help our channel grow. Yeah, all right. And as always, guys, keep steeping. Keep steeping. And see you next weekend. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.